What is the most cruel thing a family member has done to you? NSW. When I was 9 years old my mother sent me on an airplane alone to live with my father on a wretched island in South America. I contracted a skin infection that spread everywhere below my waist called impetigo. My father wanted to get back at my mother for leaving him so he told me it was mosquito bites and not to worry. When the infection had progressed and completely covered my legs with sores, I was unable to walk to the clinic. I was forced to suffer immobilized wild lines of ants ate scabs from my legs for a little over a month. A homeless man was snooping near the house and criticized my father and had the church send a nun to bring me to the clinic where they said it was the worst common infection they had seen and was easily treated with antibiotics. The worst part of the story is that my father's cousin was a doctor who lived 10 minutes away in the village which I found out years later from my mother who had taken me to his cousin when I was a baby for the exact same malady. Uh, dang. I'm glad that homeless man was snooping. On my 7th birthday, my biological mother sold my clothes and birthday presents while I was at school for drugs and then disappeared for a couple days. That wasn't exactly the happiest birthday I ever had. My mother threw away college acceptance letters and football recruitment letters because she wanted me to stay home and go to a local community college. My brother gave my name and address and social to police officers twice when he got pulled over with no license of his own. He was in his late 30s as was I. He did not tell me he did this and I did not know about it until I got the letter from the registry saying that my license was going to be suspended for non-payment of fines and then my insurance rate went up getting rid of my good driver discount. For 6 years. The second time he didn't get away with it. But just knowing he did it the second time after his swearing up and down that he'd never do it again speech really freaking sucked. AA requested in PM. How he got caught the second time. He was up in NH visiting a friend, who is actually a childhood friend of mine as well. He gets popped, and he tries to pull the same thing again with the officer. The officer asked where he was staying and then proceeded to call my friend. Do you have a mister? Ah. Nebody staying with you friend our number. We have a J. Nebody staying with us. I don't know how the rest of the evening went for him after that. How I found out about the second time. I was talking to the friend mentioned above and I mentioned him getting pulled over the first time and my friend starts talking how yeah that was close. I wouldn't let that happen to you bud. Me uh, no no. I got the ticket and what do you mean you wouldn't let it happen friend oh crap you mean he did this before and got away with it? Yeah great. He is such a self-centered butthole. I'll post a couple more if people want to hear about this train wreck. Yeah, I have a friend whose dad is pretty bad with money. So he started putting some utilities in his son's name and social and he's got fricked up credit now. My mom sat there and watched as my stepdad bent my finger back so far that it broke. Context. We need some. Probably not sending me to counseling after seeing my father murder my mother with a shotgun. And then there was the whole spending the life insurance on frivolous crap like my cousin's pilot's license. So I don't really like people now. Oh man. Tons. Ruining my credit by signing up for every credit offer that came in the mail then not paying. Introducing me to people as the band fag. Beating me with her fist. Throwing shoes and frying pans at me. Watching her stepdaughters open $2000 worth of Christmas gifts apiece when she used to lie to charities and get free gifts for me and my siblings she had with the husband she divorced. Then there was the time I broke my ankle on both sides. Was sent home by an idiot a doctor wait 4 days for surgery. And realizing in a sweaty panic that my brother had stolen some of my pain medication. He was on the interstate going back home with my mom. And when I called her about it she defended him. Frick those narcissistic addicts. My girlfriend cheated on me with my father. He knew we were in a relationship. She left me for him. They are now married. Man. That really sucks. Man. I hope you got over her. If it were me. I would always remind my dad that I used to frick his wife. In high school I got really sick out of nowhere. In 7 weeks I lost over 30 pounds and went from being super active. Swimming 6-7 miles. Running 30 minutes. Weight 60 minutes per day. To watching my body wither away. I simply stopped eating and developed a complete aversion to food. Not even the smell of my favorite food would make me salivate. I go to a gastroenterologist. I had diarrhea, abdominal pain and sporadic bleeding. 
and get a myriad of tests done over the next 3 months. Nothing comes back conclusive and eventually my parents told me to suck it up. I'm not the type of person who really seeks support, but up until that point it was nice knowing I had it. My brother would flat out call me a liar, saying I was faking it and they stopped defending me. I am the type of person who hates pity, he relishes in it. Finally after 7 stroke 8 months, through process of elimination and trying meds, I am put off steroids. Within a week I am eating, gaining weight, gaining energy and getting back to my life. At that point my parents and brother believed me, but the damage was done. TLDR. Crohn's can be a beta dianos. Told me I had a college fund that they'd remove money from every time I got grounded. By the time I was a junior in high school, around when I had to start applying for colleges, my imaginary college fund was conveniently empty. In 2010 I came home and found my 19 year old first cousin, and closest family member, dead in my bedroom. He had hanged himself the day after calling his mother to confide in her that he was feeling suicidal. Nobody else knew. His mother never notified her sister, my mother, or myself to the situation we were living with. Strike 1. Strike 2. My mother's sister then called me on the one year anniversary of her son's death and asked what she had ever done to me, wondering why I had not called her first thing to console her. Mind you, I was curled up in the fetal position clutching the last pair of shoes my cousin ever wore because that's all I had left of him. She then went on to say that his love and friendship were born of his life with her and everything he was to me was because she made him that way and shared him with me. Then she said if only I had returned the love she taught him to give me he might still still be here I later found out that she now tells people her son killed himself because he was living in a hostile environment and his cousin, me, shunned him because he was black and I apparently hated him for it. His father was black, our family is white, I understand grief, I understand mourning, and I understand guilt. I do not understand why someone would say that and then and then go to face your own family like that. As far as I am concerned my mother is now an only child and the two children that are left are orphans that sometimes visit my grammy while I am visiting. Not me, my cousin. My uncle shot his dogs, one by one, after he stepped in some dog shit. My cousin was 12. Another time, my uncle was playing with my cousin's gerbil and it bit him. Dead gerbil. I feel that it's important to point out that my cousin is adult now, sane and totally not a serial killer. My uncle used to beat him, degrade him, cuss at him, and cuss at me, too, when I was visiting. I never told my dad. One time, when I was 14, he grabbed me roughly, ripping my shirt, then popped me across the face. He was trying to make a point. No bueno. I went into feral combat mode, kicked him in the nuts, punched him so hard I broke a finger. Kicked him some more and ran away. I was sure I was going to be grounded forever. But the whole story came out and my parents were furious. With my uncle. Frick that guy. TL. DR. My mom told me she thought I needed to stay away from the neighborhood kids after she caught me looking at. Very adult. Pron. Insinuating that I was capable of being a diddler. My mom went through a phase when I was in middle high school where she suddenly decided it was imperative that we attend church every Sunday and be a model Christian family. That wasn't bad. I actually really liked the people I met at church. I made some awesome friends. The bad part was the mentality it put her in. When I was 13, she caught me looking at internet pee and masturbating. The fallout was massive. For the next 3 months, she treated me like a depraved pervert who needed to be closely reined in. At least once a week, I would hear this condescending suspicious voice calling up the stairs asking me what I was doing. My dad didn't give much of a crap, but my mother was on a tirade about the whole affair. She delighted in telling my relatives about it too. Every chance she got, she absolutely relished in dragging my butt through the mud for it for as long as she could. The piece de resistance? I helped my sister babysit these two little kids that lived at the end of the street all the time. About 6 months after the pee incident, my sister moved out for college. The parents of the kids told me that they would like for me to continue babysitting in my sister's absence. I mentioned the offer to my parents while we were in the car one day. My dad shrugged and said it was fine. My mom took a long, awkward pause, 
and then told me that she thought I needed to get control of my physical urges before I put myself in that situation. Apparently, it's a very fine line between watching a video of two adults making love and abusing the kids down the street. My mom thought that the Bible justified her allowing my father to abuse me for the 16 years of my life that they were married. She thought that because the Bible said a wife is to honor her husband, that it meant she wasn't allowed to interfere with any discipline my father had for me or my older brother. Never once stepped in and stopped him, even the time he had me against the wall by my throat, or the time he beat my brother because he stopped my dad from hitting me in the head with the metal end of a lead rope. She just stood watching with a blank face while my dad beat me over the head with the lead rope, and then beat my brother for interfering in my discipline. The worst part was, that when she would discipline us, it was never physical because she felt bad hitting us. She told me that in her eyes, physical discipline wouldn't get her anywhere with regards to us respecting her. Yet because God said she had to honor her husband, my dad was justified in physically abusing me for 16 years, and my brother for 17. He was my stepdad, but he married my mother when I was 2 so I mostly knew him as my only father. He physically abused me, then violated me, filmed it all and put it on the internet. Years later I'm apparently one of the most prolific child p actresses. I still have to deal with the fact that perverts everywhere jack off to videos and pictures of me. I finally have a good boyfriend and I never, ever want him to know. Oh boy. Here it goes. When I was about 20, my cousin Julie announced that she would be getting married. My mom came to me and tearfully explained that Julie wanted me to wear our recently deceased grandmother's wedding dress, a pink tea length dress, so that it would be like a part of my grandmother was at the ceremony. It had to be me because my grandmother was very slim and I was the smallest person in our family. I agreed. I tried on the dress and it was too tight. Way too tight. My mother told me to starve myself and don't put a single thing in that mouth. I did. I starved myself stupid for 3 months. I was sickly, pale, had dropped about 20 pounds from my already slender frame and had constant headaches. But the dress fit. My mother kept telling me how great I looked. We flew to the wedding. My family lives across the country. Everyone was shocked at my appearance but said nothing. The day of the wedding came and I appeared in my grandmother's wedding dress. I thought people were acting strangely towards me but I didn't think too much of it. I found out later that Julie had not asked for me to wear the dress. She knew nothing about it. My mother had been telling people that I was on drugs. Not true. To get attention and sympathy. She convinced me to drop weight and show up to Julie's wedding in my dead grandmother's wedding dress to show everyone how drugged out and unstable I had become in order to get more attention and sympathy. TL. DR. I lost 20 pounds in 2 months and showed up to my cousin's wedding in our dead grandmother's wedding dress because my mother is a liar and a sociopath. My mother's boyfriend and his brother wrapped me up in a blanket and then took turns kicking me and dropping me onto the floor while laughing. My mother was across the room watching and doing nothing. I think I was 4 or maybe 5. My dad violated me for about a decade. 2-13. My mom knew about it, but she didn't tell anyone because she didn't want to lose the money from child support. My father is a monster. He is a sadist and a freak. I was tortured as a child. Abuse doesn't begin to cover it. Good days I just got punched. A bloody nose, or swollen welts. Bad days he'd hit me with a large cutting board turned sideways. I had a lot of bad explanations and broken bones as a kid. To this day, I dream about murdering him, setting things right. I remember coming home and having a bottle broken over my head, and him wiping the blood into my eyes and pressing in with his thumbs. I'd get woken up at 3 or 4 in the morning by having ice water thrown on me from a pitcher, then screamed at for being such a worthless freak. He stole all the money I ever made because I didn't deserve it, he bashed my head into the wall once so many times it caved in, and all I could hear were wet sloppy slapping sounds. I'm mostly deaf in my left ear now. The worst is when I came back from a week from my grandparents. It was my 14th birthday, he spoke so softly, my gut was in knots. I had no idea what was coming. He choked me out. I came to tied up to concrete blocks in the corner. He grabbed my brother and beat him just as bad as he'd ever beat me. He made sure I watched. 
I had to see him smile as I screamed for his mercy. It seemed to stretch on forever. At the hospital, my brother was told he was hit by a car. He had gotten a concussion and didn't remember a thing. My father told me that if I ever said anything, he'd do the same to my mom. I never did. The day after, I silently grabbed a large knife from the cutting block in the kitchen as he read a magazine at the kitchen table. I crept behind him and put it to his throat. A few, sweet, fleeting moments crept by as I felt him freeze. I had him dead to rights. To this day, I don't know why I didn't draw the blade. I had every reason. I almost died that day. He was as a CEO at San Quentin, and no one questioned why he didn't have a scratch on him, and I was left in the condition I was. But just saying self-defense is all it took. I was arrested after my release from the hospital, and wound up in a juvenile detention center. I was released after 18 months. The judge took pity on me. I'll never know why. One of the worst parts of this is even though he doesn't have any friends, you would never suspect him for what he is if you met him casually in public. I wish this story had a happy ending, but it actually led to an equally dark period of my life, for which I will always be paying. You don't get dragged through heck and come out smelling fresh on the other side. There's obviously more to tell, but this is already really long and my hands are kinda shaking just writing this. I'm fricked up, man. I mean honestly nothing I could say could make any of that pain go away, but I do wish I could give you a hug. I'm not crazy, my mother is. She started the last of very many yelling matches with angry and confused 13 year old me, sending my little sister, 3 years younger, to our neighbor's house to call the LAPD. My mother had thrown our phone against the wall moments before. After mom fibbed about me being physically abusive, I was unjustly handcuffed, stuffed into the back of a cop car, processed, put into an emergency mental ward overnight, attempting to sleep with only a translucent curtain separating me from all the real crazies howling for hours, and then placed into a mental ward at a hospital in freaking Compton. I stayed there for 3 months because I didn't want to go into foster care, I already have a family. It took time to place me into a group home in Los Angeles. The ultimate goal of this home was to reunite family. My mother quit coming to our meetings after a week. She came on what was supposed to be a meeting with my clinician and me, didn't say anything to anyone, dropping my carelessly packed belongings at the gate. Abandonment issues remain a struggle in my adult life. TL. DR. My crazy yid convincing mother lied to the police in order to get rid of me, giving me away to the state of California at age 13. My brother is 5 years older than I am, but he's always the one doing stupid crap. We lived in a 5 story house, and he would hold our dog over the balcony threatening to drop it. It pained me so much every time he did that because I love my dog so much, and seeing it squirm and hang on for dear life is just heart wrenching. He kept on doing that for the pleasure of seeing my dog and my reactions. Freaking sadist. I was going to try to pick the worst of the many times my father laid into me, but as I thought about it, I realized the most cruel was that he took away my ability to trust anyone, ever, when you can't trust the one man who's supposed to protect you from the bad things in the world, when you are instead terrified to be in the same house. For 13 years, the ability to trust people cannot be recovered. You have been vistited by the motorcyclist monkey comment monkey cycling so you never arrive late to somewhere. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.